Welcome to another installment of First Impressions on my channel, A Week in Geekdom. Geo here, and instead of doing what I did for the spring anime season where I picked out several titles that I was interested in, I'm just going to lump everything into one big video and talk about my first impressions for the new stuff that's coming out. I'm not going to talk about Apare Ranman and stuff like that because that already aired, even though it's going to finish out in the summer season. But I do want to talk about all the new shows that are debuting for the summer 2020 anime season. First impressions time. Let's do this. First one on my list that I have here on my computer is ReZero Season 2. This was supposed to come out in April of this year, but instead got delayed because of the pandemic. And here we are, and boy oh boy, that first episode started out with a bang. Everything just perfect synergy of a tragic epic in the making and the continuation of an excellent story i over the years i've come to love and adore uh re-zero one of my favorite guilty pleasures one of my favorite anime overall and i am very excited to see where the story continues the animations on point the few action scenes that we get in the first episode are fantastic to look at and like i said it goes very very wrong in that episode very tragic and i am all up for it some really cool stuff and everybody's acting is on point and yeah i, I can't freaking wait greed and gluttony look extremely interesting and creepy at the same time so i'm very much looking forward to what is about to happen in this second season next up we've got uzaki chan once to hang out and i hope i said that right i probably butchered it but i didn't know what i was getting myself into when i first started watching that series but you know uh i, I like a good comedy and slice of life and uh you know just a little dash of etchiness here and there and it's pretty cute uh I, I really appreciate that the series takes place in college because i'm so used to for so many years to seeing anime being in high school with teenagers to, so to get more series that are featuring adults is a breath of fresh air and certainly uh, it makes the comedy more uh, meaningful for someone of or, or my demographic or age group and uh, you know she's just uh, teasing uh, her senpai slash friend and he's annoyed but they sort of develop this friendship it's it's going to be interesting and pretty hilarious I'm already using online a lot of reaction uh, images uh, from the character of Uzaki because she's pretty hilarious and even though the art style is a little bit weird especially her character design I, I find the series charming enough that I want to continue moving forward with the anime next up we've got super heroes but it's spelled actually H X E R O S so sort of a play on heroes with pervertedness and hentai but it's nothing like what you're thinking of it's more of a play on super sentai shows with etchy sensibilities and fan service it's crazy it's kind of stupid and but i i'm i gotta admit uh the first two episodes that i watched i actually laughed out loud at some of the scenes and found it so ridiculous that i wanted to keep going where you have this uh, world that is invaded by an alien creature that is out to steal H energy and basically get rid of human desire from people. They feed off of that. And a lot of desires come from emotions and sexuality and all that stuff. But the main heroes, the five uh, team members of superheroes, I guess, they combat the alien creatures and of course are going to get themselves into some risque situations the art is pretty average looking i would say but it it, it has a, a witty sense of humor it knows what it's doing and it knows the type of crowd it's aiming for so it's just gonna have a, a ton of fun again if you don't mind the 
erotic nature of it, I guess, or the perverted nature of it, I think you're going to have a, a fun time laughing at how absurd the premise is and the characters and the alien creatures. Plus, easily one of the best opening themes that you'll hear this season is from that show, so I do recommend it just on that alone. Next up, we've got Decadence, which is my surprise hit so far. At just one or two episodes, I don't know what the time of this video but at uh at one or two episodes this shows a lot of promise it's a lot of tropes that we've seen before and if i were to describe a decadence to people i would say this is an anime where it mixes sensibilities from uh saga of tanya the evil because it's from the same studio that did the anime uh nut studios but interesting name by the way uh, it also has elements from Attack on Titan. It also has stuff from friggin' Starship Troopers. It has kaijus and, and giant mobile house-moving castle-type fortresses. It's got everything and a very cool protagonist. I love when you have a very vivacious and uh, expressive uh, individual as your lead, especially in animation. It just breeds life into the series as a whole. It could have been a very stale and boring series, but with having the character of Natsume there, it really does lighten things up in a very interesting way, and I cannot wait to continue with the series. It's only 12 episodes, but I do hope there's more after that because the setting of the world is pretty interesting. I think 90% of the population has been has gone extinct. Everybody's living in this giant mobile fortress and they go out to fight this alien type or monster species called the Gadol. I think that's the name for it. And they use sort of anti-gravity circular backpacks that remind me of uh, a mishmash of the Tiny of the Evils uh, equipment that they use to fly around with magic and the Attack on Titan uh, gear that they use to fight the Titans. So it's a mix of the two. Although from the first episode, and this comment is going to age horribly by the way, but from the first episode, uh, I think when there's a bubble field, that's when they can use the device. I don't think they can use it to fly around at any given time, but I might be mistaken on that. Still, it looks fantastic. The animation, especially when they're in flight and fighting, that looks amazing. Also, uh, the music and characters, yeah, I, I do wholeheartedly think this is my underdog of this summer 2020, and I will gladly do a, a full-sized review when I finish the series. Uh, next up, you've got Peter Grill, which uh, sounded interesting uh, and, and kind of perverted, but I, I'd like to check out as many shows as possible to bring you different content, I guess, for the channel. And I don't know if I'm going to review this or not, because the contents are pretty risque. There's this character, Peter, and he is the world's strongest man, and it's a world where or an alternate earth where uh, several mythical type of creatures exist, like ogres and stuff, and because uh, he's the top champ, everybody, especially the ogre girls, they want to have kids from uh, Peter. So it leads into some hilarious things, especially because he's he's trying to win over this uh, human girl who is... I uh, believe this, the daughter of the king of the land or something similar to that. At 12 minutes per episode, don't expect too much from the series. But if you like comedy and you don't mind absurd raunchiness, then go ahead and give it a shot, I guess. I do believe it is censored in case you're wondering, but there should be an uncensored version because why the hell not? Speaking of uncensored, there's also Monster Girl Doctor, which is basically a tamer version of Monster Musume. I hope I said that right. There's not a whole lot there. This human character is a doctor and he takes care of species in this alternate world. And yeah, the, uh, the other assistant or other doctor is this snake girl and she's in love with him. And 
if, if you like monster characters and don't, and don't mind that type of comedy, you can probably skip it and not miss out on a whole ton of stuff. Next up, we've got The Misfit of Demon King Academy, although I should read to you the full-length title because it is hilarious to me. It is actually called The Misfit of Demon King Academy, History's Strongest Demon King Reincarnates and Goes to School with His Descendants. This is absurdly long and ridiculous. It is this comedy slash uh, action romance about this demon king that, you know, reincarnates and is in this school. And what's fun about this series, or what I liked uh, at the beginning, is that nobody knows who he is because it's been, I think, 2,000 years. So history has sort of twisted and, uh, you know, lies and misconceptions have sort of um, raised his... Like, they know, the characters in this world know who he is, who the character is from Legend, but the name got altered and the facts got twisted along the way, which tends to happen in real life with historical figures. So now he has to prove himself and convince everybody like, yes, I am the Demon King that has come back, but he's in the body of a teenager and he's attending a school that is based off of his principles and teachings and art, demon craft or whatever. There's potential there and the first episode was pretty interesting and kind of um, shocked me with the level of violence. I wasn't expecting that from that series. I don't know if it was just me, but I wasn't expecting that. Hopefully with more episodes and character development, because the character is pretty overpowered, and that's one of my main concerns when it comes to these type of shows. Uh, you're basically doing a wish fulfillment series, and the character doesn't have a lot of room to grow, but uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully there is some adversity, because at the first two episodes, he can pretty much do anything and not break a sweat, and I don't find that entirely entertaining. I want a challenge for a hero, so we'll see how that series develops. Uh, next up we've got the second webtoon collaboration with Crunchyroll, and it is the adaptation, the anime version of The God of High School, which is basically uh, your Final Fights and King of Fighters video games brought to you in manhwa form and in now in anime form, and it's this tournament that where everybody's competing and fighting martial arts style the animation is amazing the fights are very fluid it looks very badass so i do recommend it if you want a good action series and you want to have a, a great time watching a show uh, go check it out a god of high school finally the other new title that i'm checking out is rent a girlfriend because uh, why not i like a good romantic comedy, a rom-com, especially an anime. The premise is stupid. I will be completely straightforward with you guys. This character, the main character, has been dumped after a month with uh, his ex-girlfriend now, and he is depressed, angry, and, and sad, so he finds a dating service app thing on his smartphone on the internet where you can rent a girlfriend for a day, I think. So he does it out of curiosity. He rents a girlfriend and uh, I guess sort of to calm his sadness over getting dumped. And what leads is a kind of awkward romantic comedy about two characters that would uh, you wouldn't expect them to meet and become friends, but the circumstances lead them on a path of friendship and possible romance later on. It's interesting. The art is uh, cute and fun, and the characters, the comedic uh, timing and the jokes, I think they flow pretty well where I want to continue watching it, and the protagonist isn't as whiny as I would have thought, and I'm kind of glad because this series lends itself to having terrible uh, protagonist, but for this one, uh, I'll, I'll check it out. It's it's something different, I guess, and uh, there are more girls that are going to be part of the main cast, so I don't know how they're going to fit in, but the first episode, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, pretty uh, interesting for a sort of 
etchy rom-com. Obviously, there are a lot of other shows that are premiering. I'm not going to watch every single one of them, unfortunately. Those are some of the ones that I wanted to talk about. Plus, there are other older shows that are still premiering, like Black Clover, which just came back on. There are, of course, the shows from the April uh, spring season that are picking back up, like Digimon Adventure, Millionaire uh, Detective, uh, Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater, Apare Ranman, uh, stuff like that, which uh, I will continue watching and hopefully by the end of the summer 2020 season I can bring you guys different reviews for all the shows that I talked about. But how about you guys? Any of the shows that I mentioned uh, in this episode, are you watching them? Are you interested? And let me know, of course, if there are other shows that I didn't talk about that you're watching as well as the season goes on. Guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I really enjoy doing this and talking about my favorite anime and the shows that I'm watching. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this as well. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, commenting, and being a part of this channel. It really does mean a whole ton. Check out the merch link down below. Follow me on social media. Hit the bell icon so you know when new videos pop up. And yeah, that's about it. I've got to go. I've got more anime to watch, more books to review. So I will catch all of you on our next episode.